Oh wait, no. Yeah. <laughs> Need back up a little. Oh, oops. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? This is Nam. And it's Kathy. And welcome to the fourth episode of CY Zang. F is for Flamingo. We'll explain that in a bit. Um, in the intro clip, Kathy, we saw that you were hanging out at um, this local store in Portland called Tender Loving Empire and holding up some of your prints and laughing to yourself like a dork. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing there and why you were holding up your prints? Yeah, so Tender Loving Empire is one of my stockists in Portland. And a good friend of mine came to visit a couple of weekends ago. So we took her on a mini tour of uh, the retail shops in Portland that carry my prints. It was exciting to rummage through a collection of prints at Tender Loving Empire with my friend and spotting the prints that I made that were on the shelves or that were for sale at a retail store. So can you tell me a little bit more about how you developed that relationship and how the business side of it works between you and Tender Loving Empire? Yeah, I think it was around uh, fall of last year. I decided to reach out to a few stores in Portland and asked if they'd be interested in carrying my prints and it took me a lot of time and courage to really make that to take that step because I think as artists a lot of us feel like we have to be 100% ready to do something and put ourselves out there I just feel like there's never a right time to do it and um, I was glad that Tender Loving Empire got back to me pretty quickly and their buyer was really friendly and easy to work with and she picked out uh, five prints for sale at their three locations so I'm super excited about that as far as like the business relationship how does that work um, they're carrying my prints on a consignment basis and I believe that's the case with most of their vendors so it's a 50 50 split between the store and myself and they send a check every month uh, of the payout that uh, based on the sales from previous month so I guess did, did you have to do some sort of cost-based analysis at first to see how much you're actually spending on printing the prints and if you take a 50% cut how much profit you'll get yeah definitely yeah, I know that my margins would be squeezed as a result of having to split 50% of sales with the store but at the same time they are taking care of the logistics the customer service they have a brick-and-mortar store to maintain and that's a lot of overhead on top of that um, so I understand that there's a cost of business to doing this, but at the same time, it's nice to have another distribution channel for my art prints and I don't have to do the shipping and logistics and uh, customer service. So I did the calculation and it still makes sense financially for me to do that, mainly because we're still processing our prints in-house. We're printing and packaging everything in-house in bulk before we hand over to the stores. So um, I think that's like, pretty cool because I guess we just have our overhead costs of making the prints but we don't have to pay any other overhead or fixed fee costs to have the store pick up yeah exactly uh, it's not entirely passive income as what people out there call it call it but uh, I think it's less um, it's less one-off manual work in that we don't have to ship every order and we prepare these prints in bulk once a month depends on what the replenishment needs are and uh, what's nice is also I can uh, use that as a kind of an experimental ground to test what products or what designs work well regionally or locally with this Portland market and how that differs from my online sales and so far there is somewhat of a difference so that's been an interesting learning experience. Hey thanks for discussing that. I'm going to transition over to this pink blob that you're doing. So this is for your alphabet series where you are going to do one animal for each letter of the alphabet. Now I know you did this flamingo first before you did the falcon. Why did you end up going with the falcon over the flamingo? Originally I had planned to paint a flamingo because I painted a flamingo about a year ago but I know that my style has been evolving and looking back at the last flamingo I've 
not I no longer like it. I decided to give it another try and also as a way to monitor my progress and improvement as an artist. So I did one but I didn't connect with it right away so I had set it aside <clears throat> in case it grows on me. Uh, in a few instances I painted something, don't like it right away but a few days later, later I look back on it and it actually um, grows on me. So I did the falcon after the flamingo which I liked a lot more but after I looked back at the flamingo I decided that now I do like it because I like the softness of the pink, the different hues of pink is something that I don't use often in my other paintings. Um, for some reason pink is just a color that I've avoided for a while but it's obviously hard to avoid with a flamingo and I liked how I kind of captured the softness, um, the abstractness of the feather suggesting it without actually painting actual feathers. And so uh, now I like it. Was this one of those pieces where you had to do the animal or this painting one, two, three times before you got it right? Or was this on a first try? I believe this was a second try this time around. Uh, most of my alphabet series is between a first to third try. So this is a second try. The first try I didn't like how the, the middle, like the, the blob, <laughs> the main body area turned out. Um, and this one I was a little more controlled with it. Do you get upset with you or are you hard on yourself when you can't get it on the first try or do you look at it as just repetition and practice and you're just warming up? I do get not so much upset. I get disappointed if my first try isn't what I want it to turn out. And I know that's a silly thing to say because um, it just takes a while. Like even if for artists that have done this for years and decades, they're not going to be happy with every piece that they create. But with me, for some reason, when I sit down to paint, like I want everything, I want every piece I do to be a final draft. And I don't know if that comes from my perfectionistic side of it or because I don't have a lot of time to really paint for a few hours. So I want every piece to count. I don't know if anyone out there relates to this. But if I've spent, like, say, two hours on a piece and I'm not happy with it, I do get like this visceral, um, I guess, disappointment is the best word I can think of about it. But I know that the next one will be better. So I feel like I should almost treat every first attempt as a draft. So maybe it will, it will lift the pressure off of it and something better may actually come out of that. I don't know. I'm thinking out loud right now, but um, it seems like in my experience so far in this series, my second piece is has been better than the first. And then do you take a break in between your first draft and second draft, like 10 minutes or one day? Yes, yeah, sometimes I'm just so over it, <laughs> so upset with the current one I just did that I had to wait a day um, or two before coming back. Sometimes I'll skip I'll move on to another subject before going back to this one. Uh, in this case, that's what I try to do. I actually plan on doing a third flamingo after doing the falcon, but um, good thing I ended up liking this falcon. So yeah, I do give it a break. Um, Take a break, like that Hamilton song. <laughs> yes. So yeah. it seems like you're finishing up here. Um, what's going on on these last final steps? I think I'm uh, waiting for each layer to dry before adding more details. So the, the under layers tend to be more loose, lighter, a uh, lot more watery. After the under layers dry, I add more details with smaller brush. So I, um, just now I'm using a teeny tiny brush to fill in some feather details um, and adding in maybe the darkness around the eyes and the beak. And it's done. This was a quick painting. Uh, there wasn't a lot of area to to cover, and I kind of like that. So it's... the entire painting took me maybe 25 minutes, uh, and I did really, really minimal sketch with a pencil. And did you scan this one, and is it up on your shop? It's on my Etsy shop, I believe, and maybe my website. Um, so th my plan with the series is to do a release at the very end uh, of all the animals. I think I released a couple pieces so far, but I want to do a mass release at the end. Got it.
Thank you very much for joining us for this uh, latest episode. And next letter should be G. G. So we'll see you all soon. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for listening and watching.